G'day Cheeky Dogs, today we are going to be breaking down the Bluey Season 3 episode, Puppet, and all of the hidden details that I found in this episode. I don't know what that says, I can't read! And yes, we are going to be talking about the end scene, our traditional Easter eggs, the special photos we saw in this, the fourth wall breaks, literally all the extra little things that maybe you might have missed in this episode. So if you love Easter egg breakdowns and hidden details as much as I do, don't forget to hit that like button down below as well as that subscribe button and that bell for notifications so you know when any more of my videos come out. But till then, let's roll the intro and get started. G'day cheeky dogs, my name's Margie and I'm an Australian currently living in America. So yes, let's start off with that end scene first because I realised that that kind of maybe doesn't make any sense but let's be honest, that's what everyone is going to be talking about. So, everything we know about this end scene is that it, yes, took one and a half hours to actually do that really tiny little bit of animation. And the hand that you see doing that is actually Joe Brum, the creator of Bluey's hand. So he used to be an animator before he became a writer and the creator of Bluey. So it was really cool to see that like he got to have his own little cameo within his own show. Now, we also found out from some of the interviews he did, specifically the one with the Gotta Be Done podcast, that he had to fight to have this scene put in at the end. Yeah, it, it took a lot of fighting basically, to get that sequence over the line. Um, probably the biggest fight of season three, if not the whole series, I would say. And it was, of course, very much influenced by things that had been done in the past with Chuck Jones and Bugs Bunny and, like, the sort of fourth wall breaks there with the animation, as well as the Astro Boy end scene, which really kind of influenced Joe Brum into doing this. There's plenty of old episodes of um, Bugs Bunny and, and Disney and stuff where the animator's hand used to come in. Or for me personally, the end of Astro Boy, where they used to slowly show a run cycle forming. And it was just that little little insight into this job that we all do and it sparks things off in kids minds and I just thought you know what we are we sort of we've all been that kid who saw that and maybe that's why some of us are here in this room and so it feels right just to pass that on and I think definitely will inspire many many children to grow up and become animators as well so let's talk about the next big easter eggs and those were the photos that we saw in this episode so of course the first photo that we saw was Chili pregnant at Sydney so of course the healers live in Brisbane Ben, but Sydney is maybe the most iconic place in Australia and we see that in this photo. She is at the Sydney Harbour. You can see the Sydney Harbour Bridge in the background, the Sydney Opera House and of course her there with a slightly rounded belly and a little hairstyle as well and I do think that this is maybe her pregnant with bingo because we do see some little grey hairs on one side of her head and we know that she didn't have any in baby race when she had Bluey so maybe this means that she is pregnant with bingo in this photo. The second photo we see of course is the wedding photo. It was so beautiful to see this especially just all the little details that they put into this as well. Everything from Bandit having a mullet again, the bone cuff links, as well as his sort of like five o'clock shadow slash beard with the white fur on his nozzle. And then even with Chili, she has her own little hairstyle as well and their outfits are beautiful. And a lot of people think that this kind of replicates like the very famous Neighbours wedding. Neighbours is an incredibly famous like sitcom soap drama TV show in Australia that's been running for years and years and years. But the most famous wedding from it was Jason Donovan and Kylie Minogue. And if you look side by side, these photos look so similar. So I wouldn't be surprised if there's a little bit of inspiration drawn from that. Now, of course, we do have our traditional Easter eggs as well. We do see a long dog on the kitchen bench holding its own little puppet as well. And of course, we see Chattermax hidden inside of the like glass cabinet behind Bandit in that first scene too. Puppets is also one of the episodes that did get changed on Disney+. Plus. So here is the Australian version. It's sweet chili sauce. Care for a lick? Tempting, but no. And here is the Disney Plus US version. It's sweet chili sauce. Do you want a bit? Tempting, but no. What do you think of the changes as well? Let me know in the comment section down below if you agree with the changes or disagree and why. But why do I have to? We have two kind of like Aussie slang references. The first one is grub, which just kind of means like someone who's like a bit dirty. Because you're a grub. You don't brush your teeth, you don't eat vegetables, and you don't take showers. <laughs> Rub. And mucking around, which means being foolish. <laughs> He's just mucking around. We also, of course, have maybe one of my favorite like Easter eggs of all time, and that's a reference to the original one minute bluey, never seen ever pilot, which of course everyone did end up seeing this year because it got leaked. So the reference, of course, is salad dodgers. How's it going, salad dodgers? And that's in reference to the pilot where we see Bandit playing a game called Salad Dodgers, which is meant to be like fruit ninjas. We do have two really funny like Bandit moments as well. The first one being bauxite. Okay, we'll say bauxite. You ready? Ready. 
Bauxite! Bauxite! For those of you who don't know, bauxite is a type of rock that aluminium comes from, and of course, with Bandit being an archaeologist, it's not surprising that he would choose a word like bauxite. We also see like pictures of him in the background as an archaeologist. And of course, his own fourth wall break to us as the audience saying, why does he do this to himself? The thing is, I do this to myself. Another really cool hidden detail was the anime falling in love filter, like the pink one with the, like, the little love hearts. I love that they did that over chili. We also find that Bingo loves broccoli and they also referenced blue bears and I have no idea what this means. Morning blue bears. I've literally not at all. I've scoured the internet and no one else seems to know. So if you have any idea, please let me know in the comment section down below. But of course I did really love like the montage and the fact that they did a montage in Bluey as well of Unicorns going from being a grub to actually, you know, being ready with a little bow tie to try and woo chili. And we should talk more about about Unicorse, of course, because he is one of the main parts of this episode. Unicorse! Now he reads the title card. I don't know what that says, I can't read! Or, I mean, technically doesn't read the title card, and this is the second time actually that this has happened. The first one is in bus. This episode of Bluey is called cool. Ah, forget. And now this time with Unicorse. We also see Unicorse voiced by everyone in the family for the very first time. And we found out that Unicorse is an actual game or puppet that Joe Bob has played with his own kids. When I used to play Unicorse with the kids, they would, you know, I just remember lots of times where they would try to convince Unicorse that he was a puppet. Look, mate, you are a puppet and I do control you. I'm sorry. I do think also like the whole idea of like, my life is a lie. It's very like Truman show. Like it reminded me a lot of like, you know, not everything is real, everything is a lie. As well as like that Buzz Lightyear kind of like existential crisis that he was having too. <gasps> my life is a lie. So I love that they sort of really put in that idea of like, are we all puppets? Again, kind of like a matrix idea of like, is this real? Is it not real? How can you be sure you're not a puppet? <laughs> I know, it's really in-depth for a kid's show and I absolutely love it. Now, of course, there are multiple lessons here throughout the episode. Everything from you should be happy with who you are. I'm happy with who I am. Why should I change? To personal responsibility versus parental responsibility. You got that, Dad? What's it got to do with me? Yeah, what's it got to do with him? Even if you're no one, you can also be everyone. You know what's good about being no one? What? You're everyone. And I do really feel like that was like the creator trying to tell us that Bluey's family, they're technically no one. They're like an animation. But because of that, they can also be everyone. We can all find ways to relate to the family and we all do, which is why we love Bluey so much. So for me, this episode was oh, like at least five out of five long dogs. It was amazing. All the Easter eggs in it and just like the amazing fourth wall breaks with the animation scenes were just incredible. But cheeky dogs, let me know in that comment section down below. How many long dogs would you give this episode and what was your favorite Easter egg as well? And also while you're down there, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and that bell for notifications so you know when my next video comes out, which will most likely just be tomorrow because I'm doing Easter egg breakdowns for every single episode that's come out in this new season B Disney Plus release of the 10 episodes. From musical statues all the way to the decider. But until my next video, I have picked you cheeky dogs out a few other videos that maybe you would like to watch and I'll see you all in another video. Mwah. Bye!